Tomorrow is our opening day of deer season for muzzlock. But we also currently have Hurricane Ian rolling in. So yeah, it's gonna make things challenging. And that made me think, okay, how do you hunt deer during a hurricane? Well, the answer I came up with is you don't. Or at least I'm not planning on it. But it did get me to thinking about hunting in terms of the economic hurricane that we have rolling in. And we do have one on the way. So I thought this would be a great day to hang out in the shop and talk about how hunting should fit into our lives, the benefits it can give us in hard times, and how to make hunting great again. Okay, I need to apologize up front today because I'm just all doom and gloom and I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm just getting over a really bad cold. I'm still stopped up. We got a hurricane rolling in out there. The rain's blowing sideways. Economic news isn't looking good and it's getting worse by the day. A lot of Europeans right now, they're trying to figure out how they're going to heat their homes this winter. And they're looking at a depression this year, not a recession, a depression. A lot of Ukrainians, they've lost their homes, their families, parts of their country. A lot of Russians are hurt. There's a lot of doom out there, so yeah, I'm feeling a little gloomy. And tomorrow's opening that deer season. That's what's got me more than anything, I think. Can't hunt in this. <laughs> so, but there's a lot here we need to talk about. <clears throat> and I want to talk about hunting as, as an option for making things better during hard times. Because we're looking at some really hard times now. And a lot of us have lost track of the purpose of hunting. Which is to make life better and to put food on the table. I used to do a lot of fishing bass fishing and I fished in tournaments and I would have been out practicing on a day like this. Uh, and the reason for that was not just to learn how to catch fish in bad conditions, but also to learn how to dress for this. Alright, you go out and you fish and it's miserable and cold like this, rain blowing sideways, and you get soaking wet and you're cold and miserable and you go back home and you say, okay, this jacket didn't work. I made a change here, and you make a change, and eventually you learn how to dress for this, to go fishing in it. And for myself, I learned how to dress for it, so I could go out in a tournament in conditions like this, and not only was I going to catch a few fish, I was going to be comfortable, so I could grind it out. I was probably going to make a check and do better than most people. But that's because fishing tournaments was a competition. And it wasn't about catching fish, it was about catching more and bigger fish than everybody else. Not what I needed to eat, just being better than everybody else. Okay, that's what hunting's turned into for so many of us now, it's a competition. We even came up with a way to score racks so that you know we, we could do points and see who could win the competition. We turned it into a game. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to throw that out quick. It's fun when you're really into something and competitive and you're, you're serious and you're on it. And you're competing. That's fun. The downside, though, is there's no limit to it on what we can spend. Just, we're competing against people, not nature at that point. And the, if they spend more, we've got to spend more to stay competitive. If they get the new electronics that cost five, ten thousand dollars for the boat, we got to spend that to stay competitive. If they go lease whatever track of land in Iowa that has the biggest deer and we want the biggest deer, we got to go lease a track somewhere to stay competitive. It's competition. No end to what we can spend competing. As a result, hunting and fishing both. Those used to be productive activities. They literally, we got more out of it than we put into it. They weren't sports. They were how people stayed alive. It's how you put food on the table. Well, now, for so many of us, they've become sports. 
And the spending that so many of us are doing is not sustainable. Right, we're spending on hunting. We're, you know, we've got to have the the latest cell cameras so that we can look at our phones and, and watch the deer live at, as they play around the automatic feeder we got set out there. Yeah. On whatever property we've leased or whatever hunting club we're in. And if it's really prime property, we're going to pay a bunch for that lease. Or we go out west or to Canada with the really big trophy whitetail or mule deer or elk. That's not sustainable for most of us. My, our lifestyles in general are not sustainable for most of us. And I say that because of the record amounts of consumer debt out there right now. Just like government spending is not sustainable for most of our governments. And I say that based on the record amounts of government debt. Okay, so it's economically, it's looking like we're in a bad situation. Because all that isn't sustainable. And it's, we should have went through some economic hard times a while back. Recessions, depressions, they're cyclical. They come and go. Well, we should be getting over a really bad recession or depression right now and emerging on the other side and things doing great. But our governments chose to use debt to keep that from happening and use that to prop up our economies. And they, they kicked the can further down the road. Right now, it looks like we've run out of road. So, yeah, our, our countries, our governments, our lifestyles, none of it appears to be very sustainable at the moment. <laughs> and sadly, so many of you have never experienced serious economic hardships. It's been a long time since we had a serious depression or recession. A lot of you were young then and just, you know, your parents might have, experienced it, but you didn't have to deal with it. So we've got so many of you that have no clue what what we're potentially in for. This economy, who knows? It could be all sunshine and rainbows next year. It's probably not going to be. It's getting bad for a lot of people now. Okay, well, for those of you that have no clue what you're in for, it's bad. And the worst part's just you don't have options. Right. When you have no money, you have no options. Uh, and that's what we're heading toward. That's what most of us experience in a recession or a depression, is just lack of money. And it's not that you can't work, it's there's no jobs. Uh, you, you spend all day working to try to find a job. Or if you get one, it ain't paying much because you're competing with everybody else for that job, back to competition. <clears throat> well, hunting can really help out in such situations, but it can also help out right now in terms of preparing for such situations. If you approach it as it was meant to be, as a productive activity. All right, so focusing on using hunting and fishing as a means of putting meat in the freezer. All right, that helps. And how many of you even know right now what you spend a month on groceries, on food? Seriously. Okay. If you don't, I challenge you. Go through your finances. And don't know. Almost everybody now knows, okay, I pay out $1,000 a month for whatever. And I've got $500 a month left over. That's how most people now calculate what they can afford because they know they got $500 a month left over, so they stop and say, okay, well, I can go finance whatever and the payments will only be $400 a month, so I can afford that because they leave me $100 extra left over. So most calculate their finances now. I challenge you go through your finances and seriously figure out what are you spending on groceries? What are you spending on electric? Electricity, your car, gasoline, everything. Know where your money's going. Okay, that's where you're at. Now come up, and what you're doing, your current lifestyle is plan A. 
All right, now come up to plan B. What are you going to do if you lost your job tomorrow? What are the first things you're going to cut out? What's your emergency plan? All right. Plan C. What, what if next week you're making half as much as you do now? It might not happen, but it could. All right. And here's the thing. Economic hardships. It's tough on us mentally. Well, most people, the reason it's so tough on so many is they've never stopped and thought, okay, I could experience economic hardships. I mean, if you've never experienced it, why would you think you could? For, for most, it's not that they don't have a plan B. It's in their mind that they have no concept that they could need a plan B. Well, then all of a sudden you're trying to figure out what you can sell to pay your light bill to keep the power turned on, to keep the heat on. That takes a mental toll on a lot of people. A serious talk. What I'm saying is be prepared now. All right, have, have that plan B in place, that plan C. What's the first thing? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still not over this cold. What's the first thing you could sell if you had to, to keep the power turned on? The second thing. You know, how far could you go with that? Okay, now let's think, talk about hunting, because that's what this is about, the hunting. How much could you save hunting? How much less could you spend at the grocery store on food each month if you've got four or five deer in the freezer, along with some squirrels and some rabbits and some fish, or maybe an elk or bear? And this is important, too. We're all in different areas, we're in different situations, hunting different game. How much does it cost you to go hunt? So if, if you have to travel a long distance to go hunting, is it even economically worth it for you to go try and do it? If you're going to spend $500 to save $200 on your grocery bill, is it worth it? No. All right, but if you have options reasonably close by, you can affordably go hunting, how much could you save on your grocery bill? Alright, how quickly could you get out of debt if you applied what you save monthly on your grocery bill, if you applied that to your debt? And for the past 10, 15 years, it's, everybody's been encouraging everybody else to go get in debt. Zero percent interest rates, one percent interest rates, two percent interest rates. Go take out a loan. It's, it's cheap. Money's cheap. And so, so many people now, that, that's their whole concept of how you get by is you go borrow money. Alright, well then you got the people like myself that I, I hate debt. I hate it with a passion. All right, well, we're entering the times now where I get to say, I told you so. Because <laughs> the last 10, 15 years, 0% interest rates and all that type of stuff, y'all were telling me, hey, it, it, don't save money, go borrow it, it's cheap. All right, well, this is why you don't go borrow it. Because you still got the debt. Yeah, it was low interest rates, yeah, it was cheap. If you bought a car, it was low interest rates. You paid it off, got paid for, you're done great. You came out ahead, that's a smart move. But for all the rest of you that's still in debt, this is why you don't do that because how are you going to pay the debt back if you lose your job in six months? In two months? Right, that's where this is going quick. Those interest rates going up. It's going to take a little while before you see the results of that. It always takes a while for that to trickle down to us normal people, but it's, we're going to see it soon. And for those of you that you think you can afford such lavish, lavish expenses as that $100,000 boat and truck and, you know, the however many thousands of dollars on the lease and, you know, that $5,000 hunting rifle, it's been my experience that people that make more generally borrow more. 
Okay, so when those hard times do hit and the money dries up, those are the ones that are hit the hardest. So I want all of you to be aware of this. Okay, now I'm not saying, you know, go panic and run through the streets screaming, you know, the sky's falling, it's all ending. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying get mentally prepared just in case. So go ahead and start thinking about how you're going to leave yourself some options. Okay, and then start thinking of hunting in productive terms. Right now, how, how good are you at scoring antlers on a buck versus how good are you at sharpening your knife? Okay, in my area. We have a lot of processors that we can just go drop a deer off and they'll skin them and clean them and process them, butcher them up, everything, and then you just go back and pick your deer up, pick up the meat. I haven't had to skin a deer or clean one in a long time. I've gotten spoiled with that myself. Well, their prices are going up. Not to mention, we had a major processor locally that just, announced they're no longer doing deer, they're going to just do farm animals, cattle, hogs, and that type of thing. Right. That's going to put a lot more demand on the remaining processors. They're going to have to raise their prices significantly. They're already going to have to pay their help more because of inflation. Their help's going to want more just like everybody else because it's hard to find help everywhere for any, all places right now. Hence, drive, that's what's driving a lot of the inflation. It's going to be a lot harder to process a deer now. A lot more expensive. All right, fortunately, I know how. Fortunately, I've got a good friend, Joey, that is an absolute bona fide expert. Okay, but for yourself, if you had to process a deer, could you? If you had to process a bear, elk, rabbits. Squirrel, are you prepared to start cleaning game? Do you know how to age the meat? Do you have any way to a cooler to where you could? Small game, you can do it in your refrigerator. Deer, you can quarter your deer up and put those quarters on ice water in a big cooler, and that's the same as hanging them in a cooler and tage your meat. Leave them in there for five days, come back, process you make just just saying but look into all that and learn how to sharpen your knife and realize that might be more important this coming year than being able to score antlers all right so just in general think about if you approached it from being productive on your hunting standpoint versus competition what, what would you change what could you change what's really going to matter Right, just, just some things to think about. And then how are you going to leave yourself some options if things really do get bad? And then how can you incorporate hunting and fishing into leaving yourself some options, taking pressure off the grocery bill, helping yourself out financially? Okay, this wasn't what I had planned for today. Not at all. I'd planned on being at the range this week and Joey wrapping up everything with this 270 WSM and setting the maximum point blank range for it, getting it nailed down for deer season. And him and I both have been working on different things, load testing, getting our rifles ready for deer season because our season's here. All right, so we've been busy behind the scenes. A hurricane showed up. We're in a rain delay, but that's okay. When God closes one door, he opens another. Right, so there's plans change, things change. We got to change with them and take advantage of the opportunities we're given. Okay, and the video today, I really felt like I needed to make this video because I feel like I've been setting a bad example on the channel here. Okay, I've been doing a lot of things that aren't sustainable. I've bought a lot of rifles in the last couple of years, done a lot of load testing. Okay, but what I said before though about we're all in different situations. 
okay, buying a lot of rifles, all the shooting, the expense and so forth, isn't sustainable for a lot of people. But keep in mind, I do have a YouTube channel. All right, so thanks to all of you that have been watching and sharing and subscribing, YouTube's actually covering my expenses. I'm not making anything, but it's covering my expenses so I can get a rifle and do the testing and so forth. And for me, it is sustainable. But this is the Simple Living Channel, and I wanted to explain that because that isn't necessarily sustainable for everyone. Well, we're all in different situations, okay? And w with that said, we just went over 10,000 subscribers, by the way, a couple of videos back. A couple of you congratulated me then. Thank y'all. And thank every one of you that have subscribed. And as far as going forward, I have really enjoyed doing the project series with that, the Featherweight 257 Roberts and Joey's 270 WSM. I've learned a lot going, you know, really in depth in these rifles and setting them up and so forth. And I want to do more of that going forward. Okay, and thank the Lord, I, YouTube's paying the bills for us on this. <laughs> so we have some options going forward for doing this. And I, I know I've learned a lot and I feel like a lot of you have as well. And I feel like as long as the channel's continuing to provide knowledge for all of us, it will continue to grow. All right. And knowledge is valuable. Good times are bad. So I feel like the channel itself is actually contributing something, whatever that may be. So I do want to keep going in that direction. And with that said, because YouTube's actually covering a lot of the expenses now, uh, we have options as far as rifles to set up in the future. So this isn't any longer, this doesn't have to be my personal rifles that I'm getting for my small collection. The rifles I've always wanted to shoot and try. Going forward in the future, I want to do some rifles that y'all want to see me go through and do a project on. Rifles that y'all wanted to try or want to learn more about. And this could be new rifles, this could be older rifles, you know, it doesn't matter. All right, but I would like to start getting some comments on the rifles y'all would like to see in the future become a project where we go through, you know, and really dive deep into getting them to shoot and set up for hunting. It's still hunting rifles. That's, that's where my interests are because of the practical application of hunting rifles. Hard times, hunting rifles, you put food on the table. A lot of other rifles aren't as well suited for that specific task. They can be used for it. All right, again, I, I want to focus on practical things that are going to help us. All right, so yeah, be commenting below on some rifles y'all would like to see so I can get an idea of just you know where the interests are. At some point in the future, I'll do a, take a poll on different choice, you know, different rifles, and then what y'all want to see, we'll go through and we'll we'll do a, a complete project on one of those rifles or several of those rifles over time. Now keep in mind, everything on YouTube takes a lot longer than you would expect. All right, so this isn't going to happen overnight, and I've got other projects still in the works in the meantime. But, yeah, I would like to do more of that in the future. And then if there's other things y'all want to see, hey, comment below. I mean, I say, well, the channel's doing well, and it's because of all of you. Well, hey, leave me some feedback on what y'all would like to see. Right? And times are probably going to get tough here real soon, financially. It's not the end of the world. We're going to make sure we're ready are as ready, best prepared as we can be. So uh, it's nothing to worry about. Worry comes from not being prepared. We're prepared and we're getting there. Right. God bless and y'all have a wonderful day.